One of the most important components of statistics is what's called descriptive statistics, where we describe data or a set of observations. The most important way to describe data is through measures of central tendency, or what is the center of this distribution of data that we're observing. And there are three different ways you can do it. One is the mean, which is probably the most popular, the median, and the mode. So with the mean, all we're doing is we're taking the average across all these observations. You sum up each observation and then you divide it by the number of observations. The median, on the other hand, is the middle score. So if you were to arrange all the scores from smallest to largest, you would take the very middle of those scores, regardless of the range or the distribution of all the scores, whether they were very big or very small. Lastly, the mode represents the most common observation. In other words, the most popular option, so to speak. To do this in R, what I have is a data set called golf scores. These are 26 players who were playing on a golf course and for one of the holes, which was a par four, these were their scores in number of strokes. You can see that there does seem to be a clustering around a large number of fours for that hole, which is very close to par. Well, four is par for this hole in this example. If we want to use measures of central tendency to describe this data set, first of all, we can just use the mean command, which is a built-in R command. So type in mean, parentheses, and then golf scores, the name of our vector. You can see that the mean is very, very close to four. It's only off by about five hundredths. So essentially, it's equivalent to four. We can also use the median to describe this same data set. And again, the procedure is the same. We type in median, parentheses, and then the name of the vector. Lastly, for the mode, there is no built-in mode function in R, but I've downloaded a package called mode EST, and one of the functions is MFV. So the same thing, I also get a mode of four. If I want to plot this, I can just use hist golf scores and breaks. I'm going to have that be 10. Okay. Actually, let's pare it down a little bit. Okay. So this is a visual representation, a plot of all these golf scores. And you can see that it tends to cluster around 4, which all our measures of central tendency have suggested is the center of this distribution. However, let's say that I was playing, and instead there is one more score and I scored a 30 on that hole. All right. Now if I were to do the same thing and use the mean as a measure of central tendency for this distribution, you would see that it's actually way off. It's not a very good description of the data at all. It's closer to five now than it was to four, which is a huge difference. However, if I use the median, you see that it is the same and same with the mode. Those are both four. They haven't changed, even in the presence of what is called an outlier, an abnormally large or small score in a data set. So you can see that the mean isn't always a great way to describe your data. For example, let's say that this pen represents a distribution. Okay, so the mean would represent where my finger balances this distribution. Pressure's on, I gotta balance this. Okay, so the mean is about right where my finger is right now. But let's say we add an outlier, the cap of this pen. Put that on there, and now to find the mean or the balancing part of the distribution, I have to move my finger far more to the right towards that outlier. It's a brief graphical de demonstration of what the mean does and what it looks like. Back to our studio. So we've used a very simple data set and we've used three different measures of central tendency on that data set, the mean, median, and mode. Lastly, you also might want to use the range as a descriptive statistic for your data. In this case, you can see that the range goes from one to 30. Those are some very simple ways to do descriptive statistics and they're all measures of central tendency, minus the range, but that's a very common descriptive statistic as well. 
In the future tutorial, we'll talk about the central limit theorem and how we can apply that to data sets that are what are called normally distributed.